Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with my review for Leprechaun Back to the Hood. I guess once wasn't enough. <laughs> this review is going to be pretty quick, because I'm going to try to get through this as fast as I can. Uh, that way I can hurry up and finish off these Leprechaun movies and move on to a franchise that I like more, like Evil Dead. Which, I don't hate these Leprechaun movies, they're not horrible or anything. I actually enjoy Leprechaun in Vegas, as a, for a B-movie about a killer Leprechaun, it, it's alright. Um, like I said, first movie's just a passable movie, just okay. Um, there's plenty of other better B-movies. Uh, Leprechaun 2 would be about the same as the first one if it wasn't for that new stupid rule they add in in the film for just that film. About the Leprechaun not even being able to hurt anybody who happens to have one of his gold coins. That's stupid. Uh, <laughs> uh, fucking Leprechaun 3, like I said, is my favorite because it's the most fun. Um, Leprechaun 4 in Space is an abomination to human race. Leprechaun in the Hood is a passable movie. That movie, like the dialogue in it with everybody cussing over and over, just made me laugh. So that's the reason why I elevate that movie to a passable film. But it's the most obvious, I mean, it's obviously the most low budget in the series. That brings us to Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Once again, Leprechaun's played by Warwick Davis. I don't like the Leprechaun's look in this one. He has a new look. It's more of like an old-fashioned, old-age look, whereas look in the first four films I felt was more timeless and more appealing. I like that better. I don't really like his look here. Um, but another thing I don't really like about this is the Leprechaun doesn't use magic. He just uh, he only uses magic maybe like two scenes in the entire film. He mostly just like fist fights people and kills them with his bare hands. This movie's more like an actual, just like a slasher movie, really. Uh, this could have been more or less any bad guy. It doesn't really make it bad, really, but I'm just saying, it didn't even have to be a leprechaun in the film. This one didn't. It could have been anybody, really. <laughs> the leprechaun was just a sl just an everyday average slasher in this one. He doesn't even use his magic maybe two times in the whole entire film. Um, I maybe missed the telekinesis from the last movie. <clears throat> but anyway, just to jump straight into it, you actually get an opening for the film. Uh, where it's uh, where it's like a storybook and it tells the history of where the leprechaun came from. I like this. It's like an animated storybook sequence. This is kind of neat. It says that leprechauns like used to protect the king's treasure, and after the king died, all the leprechauns went back inside the earth, I guess to leprechaun hibernate or something. But Warwick Davis's leprechaun stayed behind and uh, took the king's treasure, and he became like greedy and corrupted and evil. So. Kind of explains where the Leprechaun came from, even though none of these movies are connected at all. This movie is not connected to the last movie, which I thought was kind of weird. Why not just make this movie connected to the last one for the first time? I mean, Leprechaun Back to the Hood, I mean, it, it sounds like a direct sequel, but what the fuck ever. But anyway, <clears throat> so the characters in the film, we got, um, we got like this everyday average, uh, girl in the film who wants to be, uh, who's like saving money for college. It's like, cliche typical shit she has like an ex-boyfriend named rory uh none of the actors are really bad here you even got sticky fingers or fingers or fingers or however you say his name uh he's actually funny here i enjoyed him like one scene he like uh he's like sniffing some weed and he looks directly at the camera and goes Whoa. i thought that shit was funny just the, the way he delivers it and the way he plays the scene is funny and, like, there's another scene where after they get the gold, he buys, like, big, huge fucking garbage bags full of weed. And he's, like, walking away with it. And these little kids are, like, jumping and trying to grab the, the weed in, in the garbage bags. I thought that was funny. Awkward scene, but funny. Um, this film is more entertaining than Part 5. And it has a higher budget than Part 5. So they're able to do more here. The Leprechaun in this film is, like, more or less portrayed as the Terminator. Because <laughs> he keeps coming after the heroes. And they keep gunning him down, shooting him, shotgunning him hitting him with cars and everything. Uh, this film aims to like aims to reach higher than what its budget will allow. It tries to do more than what uh, what what can be done in its budget really, or what should be done, or most likely what most people wouldn't do with a budget like this. Which I appreciate that. You know, why not aim high as long as you can pull it off convincingly? You can fuck it, you know. As long as it looks good. But um <clears throat> We get the beginning of the movie, the leprechaun is like attacking this priest who uh, stole the leprechaun's gold, which I find funny. It was a priest who stole his gold. And I like that the, the priest sends like the leprechaun inside the earth through like some kind of incantation or something, but he uses like holy water mixed with four leaf clovers to do it, which I find funny. The leprechaun manages to kill the priest, and the leprechaun and the priest both. Well, the priest dies, and the leprechaun goes back inside the earth. Um, skip, uh, 
don't know how long afterwards. I'm not for sure. I forgot if it said it in the movie. But you got the main character whose name I forgot <laughs> because uh, I don't know. I, I just forgot because she's not really like memorable. Her character's not, but the actress that plays her I think has a likability about her, and I enjoyed seeing her in the film. Uh, she's one of the more like likable people in these films to me. I find the characters more likable in this one than in the last one. The characters in the last one were likable, but Postmaster P was like the, the only like decent one out of the three. Or not really the only decent one out of the three, but he was the more like a... Uh, he was the one that was trying to be like a good person, so he was the more likable one of the three. But in this one, they're all pretty much likable um, because they're just like everyday average poor people who's trying to save money to go to college and all that. I know that's generic city shit. Um, typical shit been done a thousand times, but eh, they're, they're still likable. The actors are, but just to jump back into it. So the main character, the girl in the film, she finds the leprechaun's gold when she when she falls down to like a, a hole in the ground, and uh, she takes it. And the one thing I liked about this in the film, like when you pour out the leprechaun's gold and you close the box back, uh, it automatically becomes magically refilled with more gold. I thought that was kind of neat. Give me that shit. I want, I, hell, I'd still Leprechaun's gold if it did that. But anyway, so uh, she has Leprechaun's gold. She divides it between her and her friend uh, Lisa, I think was the character's name. Um, and uh, Rory, her ex-boyfriend, who she still likes. You got a lot of lovey-dovey shit in here, uh, which is fine for a while, but it becomes too much after a while. Because they keep repeating it over and over. With their, like, You get the sense that they're wanting to get back together. But uh, Rory is like selling pot and shit. And she doesn't approve of that. Like drug money stuff and all that kind of stuff. Um, she doesn't want to be a part of that lifestyle. But you get like a sense they're in. They're going to end up back together. I mean it's pretty obvious. Um, but uh, So they divide up the money. They start spending it. Leprechaun comes alive. You got this psychic in the movie. Who actually turns out to be a witch. Who has a fight scene with the leprechaun at the end. You got some okay little low budget effects scene where she's like swinging the leprechaun around with like this magic ball she's created in midair or whatever. But then the leprechaun does something back to her. The leprechaun's eyes turn red, and you're like, oh cool, the leprechaun fighting a witch. It's kind of neat him going up against another supernatural opponent for the first time. And right when his eyes start lighting it up, like he's going to, you know, fight the witch, magic, magic. All at once the scene just cuts away. You never know what the fuck happened or how he even or how he even killed the witch. And I'm like. That was so lame. That was such a waste. They, this movie tries to aim higher than its budget. That should have been a scene where they tried to do something more. I mean, it wouldn't even have to be anything amazing. They could have just, like, showed the witch's head, like, explode or something. Fuck, I don't know. But she's in the movie. The psychic is. And what's funny is, like, every time the main character and her friend go to see her, she, like, gets their names wrong and she's supposed to be psychic. I thought that was funny. That cracked me up. But, uh, so Leprechaun starts knocking them off one after another. Uh, you get some, he attacks the main character, and she, I think the main character's name is Emily. I think that might have been her name. I could be wrong. But, uh, she stabs, like, uh, some clippers in the leprechaun's eye, and the leprechaun takes off after, and the, they're still plugged up, and <laughs> he fucking, like, jerks him up midair and causes him to fly down on the ground. Decent little scene. Um, um, leprechaun kills the girl, the main character, Emily, kills her friend Lisa first. Uh, you get, this is when it becomes evidently, obviously, a slasher in these scenes, like, the leprechaun stalking her in the house. Then he manages to get her, and he, like, stabs her in the gut with his claws. Uh, right before that, she, like, takes some hairspray and burns the leprechaun's face. Decent scene. Okay. Okay, kill. Nothing major to write home about, but okay. Entertaining. Leprechaun does a lot of physical stuff in here, so it makes the film more entertaining than Part 5, where all he had to do was just wave his hand and somebody would fly backwards. Uh, that just seemed lazy, but, uh, here, I do miss the magic, though. I mean, the physical stuff is fine, but they should have added in a little bit more magic, like, here and then, and kind of spaced it in between a little bit more. It would have made it more entertaining. But, uh, anyway, or at least for me, personally. But, anyway, so Leprechaun has killed her, killed her friend. Um, they talk about giving back the gold. Rory says, fuck this shit. He takes the gold. Leprechaun comes back after uh, the main character, Emily. He wants re But he doesn't want the gold. He knows Rory took it, but he just wants revenge for, him, for her stabbing him in the eye earlier. Um, he tries to kill her. Rory shows up, knocks the fuck out of Leprechaun with a bat. Um, they get away. There's these two cops in the movie. Uh, before I forget, uh, Leprechaun kills this one guy at a party by stabbing a bong pipe in him. And then Leprechaun like gets high with the bong pipe. And he's like walking around the house. And he's like walking behind Sticky Fingers. 
and he's like, it's one of those stupid ass like comedy scenes you've seen a million times where two people's like walking around each other and they can't seem to notice each other. And the uh, sticky fingers like actually knocks the leprechaun into the refrigerator and the leprechaun's like magically got the bong pop again. He's like looking at the camera going, <laughs> that's so fucking stupid. That's horrible. That right there almost killed the movie for me. Um, but anyway, back to what I was talking about. Uh, Rory and uh, Emily, they get away. They get stopped by these two cops who are, I guess, planning on taking the gold for themselves. The leprechaun shows up. One thing I find funny is that the leprechaun's like actually gonna fist fight him, and he like looks at one of them. And he's like, "Come on!" <laughs> I thought that was funny. He like fucking jumps in the air and flies and hits one of them. But you get this stupid comedy shit where he like rips one dude's leg off, and the guy starts hobbling on one leg, saying, "Give that back!" And the dude falls over. That right there brings it to dumbass comedy territory. The last film couldn't decide what it wanted to be. This film does know what it wants to be, but it's not always successful at being what it is, which is a really silly uh, B movie. This film amps up the comedy, plays it, plays the story pretty much for laughs. Uh, there's a lot of comedy in this one. Um, Sticky Fingers, um, him and Rory and Emily, they go to the psychic. One thing I find funny is this, uh, this guy sitting there with the psychic, wanting to know about his dead wife, and Rory walks up there and he's like. Come on, man, get up. She'll still be dead tomorrow. <laughs> I thought that was funny. That was funny. Um, you got this scene, one scene in the film where there's like this, you know, right, there's like this gang that doesn't like Rory because he's selling pot on their turf, and they take the gold from him. The leprechaun shows up, and he was like driving the police car from from earlier that he got from the two cops that he killed. Um, and he like couldn't reach the pedals, and he used like one of the cops fucking legs. <laughs> he used the cop's leg that he ripped off to drive the vehicle. I thought that was funny. And he gets in a fight with the main gang leader and the dude's like beating the shit out of the leprechaun and then the, le and then the leprechaun looks at him and he's like, oh, you getting tired? You hit like a wee lass. I thought that was funny. Leprechaun hits him one time, rips his fucking heart out. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, they shoot the leprechaun all the hell the other gang members do. Fucking nose is itching. I don't know why. It's just really itchy right now for some reason. But uh, they shoot the hell out of the leprechaun the other gang members do. And then the leprechaun, like, jumps up and says, What's up, ninjas? <laughs> he starts, like, killing all the other gang members. One thing I find funny in this, you got a scene where Sticky Fingers is talking to Rory about how there's uh, four-leaf clovers in his pot, uh, which is, or his bud, if you, like, call it whatever, uh, which is obviously foreshadowing, because they're going to need four-leaf clovers later. But, uh, and there's, like, this really yuppie white guy who shows up. He's, like, such a stereo, the worst stereotypical version of a yuppie white guy you could ever see. And he's just like dumber and shit. And he walks up to Rory and he's like, he like buys some pot off of him. Then he gets ready to do a fist pound with him. And he's like, my nigga. <laughs> and then uh, I find it, what's funny is after he says it, like everybody there like freezes. And they look at him like, yo motherfucker, what'd you say? And uh, and uh, it's like sticky fingers and uh, Rory, they're like, it's no longer, uh, we don't say that anymore. It's my ninja now. And he's uh, and the guy's like, my ninja. And then, like, on his way, like, leaving, the white dude's, like, walking off, and he's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, and, like, running to his car. <laughs> that was fucking funnier than shit. That nerdy, white, <laughs> dumbass character made me laugh just because of how stupid he was. It was funny. But, uh, I like, yeah, I found that funny. But back to the, the end of the film here. Well, another thing I find funny is Sticky Fingers, like, doesn't know anything about leprechauns, but he keeps telling Rory that, don't worry, man, we just, uh, keep safe until the morning. The little, the little motherfucker's toast. And Rory's like, what are you talking about, man? He's like, sunlight, man. And uh, Rory's like, he's not a vampire, dumbass. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Um, Leprechaun shows up, kills the, the psychic who is the witch. But the scene is really stupid and it's not played very well. Um, then he goes after Rory. Well, he stabs a ball bat in the, like, he breaks a ball bat over his knee and stabs it in the sticky finger's leg, uh, which I thought was funny. Well, what I thought was funny was what Sticky Fingers said to him uh, before he did that. Uh, the Leprechaun's like, you used my gold. And Sticky Fingers is like, yeah, I spent it, I bought some bud, and I smoked that shit, and it was good as a motherfucker. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> but anyway, he takes out Sticky Fingers, doesn't kill him, but incapacitates him. He goes after Rory and Emily. Uh, they have a pretty good, like, Terminator showdown here. Terminator-style showdown where Emily keeps doing shit to the Leprechaun. Keeps trying to kill him. Rory takes the four leaf clovers and melts them down and puts them into the hollow point shells and shoots the leprechaun with it. One thing I find neat is after the leprechaun shot so many times, these little like magic orbs come out of his body and he has to like uh, 
move his hands like that and bring them back into his body, like reabsorb the magic that's leaving his body. It's killing him. Um, I like that. Of course, Roy's never able to finish him off because the gun keeps fucking jamming uh, over and over, which got annoying. Um, <clears throat> one thing leads to another. Emily manages to throw the leprechaun inside of uh, this uh, furnace or oven or whatever and cook his ass. Leprechaun shows back up. And there's like this rainbow leading to the leprechaun on top of the roof, which I thought was neat. I like the rainbow effect. Um, <clears throat> the leprechaun knocks Emily like, over the side of the building. She's hanging there, and the leprechaun can easily kill her right here. But he starts giving like a, a fucking speech. I hate this when bad guys do this in movies when they can easily win and they start giving stupid speeches. And then uh, that enables Rory to unjam the gun. He starts shooting the shit out of the leprechaun. Um, of course, it doesn't work. He runs out of bullets. And then uh, Emily manages to make it back up. She takes the gold and fucking rams it into him and knocks him off the building. He goes flying off into the cement. Um, and then that was pretty cool. Um, then it's like the next scene and the leprechaun has went down into cement and it's over. And I'm like, what? How does that even kill him? He can survive getting shot like 500 fucking times and run over like 10 times, but he can't, so he can't get out of cement. What? <laughs> and he's magic. Why doesn't he just like disappear in the cement and reappear or out of the cement? Or maybe he can't concentrate his magical abilities when he's in it. But I still don't see how that could have like stopped him. Couldn't he have just like, even if the cement would have dried, couldn't he have like just made it explode and just popped up out of it? I mean, what? I don't see how that works, but whatever. Uh, that was kind of lame. Um, the next scene, uh, Sticky Fingers is like playing basketball. Uh, he's fine. And the main two characters, Roy and Emily, they're back together. So everything's pretty much a-okay -OK in the film. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is Roy had like a, he had a new, he had another uh, girlfriend in the movie after he broke up with Emily, and she had got like a gold tooth, and you got a scene with Leprechaun killed her, and ripped her fucking gold tooth out, and then it cuts to the next scene, and he had, you find out he like, has ripped like her whole, like fucking teeth out of her mouth at once, uh, when he ripped the gold tooth out. I thought that was kind of neat, that was funny. Um, but anyway, this film was an okay film. I like this film. I mean... It's not anything amazing, trust me, it's not. The Leprechaun franchise, as a horror franchise, out of the ones I review, uh, ha or have reviewed, is most certainly, mo probably most definitely the weakest franchise I've reviewed so far. Uh, it's not a horrible franchise. It's I can see why people find it entertaining. Uh, Killer Leprechaun is a neat idea um, for a B-movie. This film, it's an okay film. I enjoyed this film more than Part 5. I liked it better than Part 4. Uh, I'd say this is my second favorite after Leprechaun in Vegas. Uh, Leprechaun 1 was pretty much just, uh, like a goofy, more, it was goofy, it was like the Leprechaun being goofy, uh, but it had more of like a horrific, uh, had, had horror scenes in it that seemed out of place, the first one did, and I just found this one more entertaining than the first one. None of these films are, like, high art in the way they're written or anything. They're, uh, seems like the filmmakers know they're B-movies and they play them up as just silly like they are. This film is the one that just, like, absorbs the comedy of the idea. Uh, there's no way possible to take a killer leprechaun seriously. I'm sorry, there isn't. Um, but, um, I mean, you can try to take him seriously. Maybe maybe a really talented director could pull it off. Fuck, I don't know. Um, I mean, you should have fun with the idea. If you play it, like, so seriously, it just comes off as stupid because you're like, why aren't you having more fun with this is what I'm saying. You know, it just comes off feeling like wrong and the tone just comes off messed up. This film I just like like the Terminator style vibe of it of the Leprechaun just keeps coming and coming and coming. So I enjoyed this film more on a, an entertaining level than the than the first film. Um I enjoyed it more as, as entertainment more than the first film. Because it knows it's goofy and plays up the goofiness more. This movie plays up the comedy a lot more than number one did. Uh, or number two. It just has much of much more of a silly vibe to it. But it's more, but it still manages to be entertaining. So it's an okay film. It's nothing amazing. It's my second favorite after Leprechaun in Vegas, just out of pure entertainment value. Where I thought the first one got a little dull at times. This film, it's okay though. It's watchable. Um, all in all, like I said, uh, Warwick Davis is. I mean, like I've said before, these films are not horrible. And the first film, it's an okay, passable movie. 
not anything amazing, but it's okay and passable. Second film, the new rule in it that they, that they added to that film was stupid. The third one is a decent film. It's all right. It's enjoyable. My favorite of the franchise. The fourth film, utter shit. Skip it. Never watch it unless you're just a real big Leprechaun fan. Uh, Leprechaun in the Hood is a passable movie. Lowest budget of the series. Very noticeable. Leprechaun Back to the Hood is most entertaining in the series because it plays the Leprechaun up. It's a Terminator-like figure who just keeps coming and coming and going and going like the fucking Irish Energizer Bunny. So, <laughs> just to end this, it's an okay, low-budget, two-star film. Um, I'll see you guys again with uh, the final Leprechaun review for Leprechaun, Leprechaun WWE. <laughs> I'll see you guys again with that one.